Okay, so the last video I made showed me unboxing and subsequently reboxing our HTC Vive Pre. It was kind of disappointing to me that we had to do that, but we didn't have a space ready, and I was really sick that night. Um, still a little congested, but not a big deal. But I wanted to show everybody how easy it really is to set up the Vive once you've kind of got an empty, clear space. Um, we actually were testing in our kitchen, which is incredibly cluttered and only about a third of this space at most. Um, we could use that for standing experiences, but what happens with the standing experiences, at least for right now with the Vive, is there's no chaperone. So I found myself bumping into a refrigerator or a cereal box or a stove as I was playing. So it's not really optimal. Um, here in our living room, we do have enough space that we can do a room scale experience. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up. Um, first of all, I'm gonna take this foam out again and attach our lighthouses. Right now, instead of using the handy dandy mounts that they gave for mounting to a wall or a ceiling, what we're using right now are two tripods, um, one for each of the lighthouses. And basically each lighthouse has a power adapter similar to this one and a pretty decent length of cable. Um, so if you are mounting from a ceiling or a wall and you mount above where a power outlet is, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, if you are mounting somewhere where there's not a power outlet, an extension cord should work fine. Um, just be sure to keep it in an area where you're not going to trip over it when you're using the Vive. Um, the lighthouses have a mount on the bottom and on the, the, the back side here. Those are to screw into a standard tripod mount. So in this case, we're going to start with this one. And it spins up kind of like a hard drive. And the light on the top indicates if it's searching for another lighthouse signal. Um, in this case, I have them both set to wirelessly communicate with each other. There is also a sync cable if you have trouble with the wireless connection. Um, I'm going to set up this one over here in this corner. Optimally, they would be a bit higher because depending on the height of the person, it might block the lighthouse itself um, from seeing the other lighthouse. But the intent of having two of the lighthouses is so that the controllers and headset are always being tracked. So if one loses tracking, the other one will still be able to. <clears throat> this one I already had plugged in over here. And now they see each other, that light over there turn white, which is a good sign. It's going to flash for a bit because I, ha I don't have everything else set up yet. So now they're talking to each other. Um, the next thing is to make the headset talk to the computer. Um, I do not have an optimal setup for a computer. I have a suboptimal setup. Um, this is a Asus G751J, which is a Core i7 processor, but it has a 970M NVIDIA video card inside it. Uh, that is not the same as an NVIDIA 970. So it's actually a bit underpowered for what they recommend for the Vive, but I've had no problems with any of the demos that we've done so far. So attached to the computer, we have 
the little link box that I showed in the unboxing video. Um, there are two cables that go to the computer on the side that says PC. Um, this is an HDMI cable. This is a USB cable. It works for either USB 2.0 or 3.0, so you don't have to have a USB 3.0 port dedicated to the Vive. I've been using the Vive box as a storage for the headset, just so that it doesn't get dusty or anything. So on the opposite side of the link box, once I untangle the cable a bit, the VR side is highlighted in orange so you know which side to plug it into. And that's got the HDMI, the USB, and the power coming from the headset. You show me the, um, the button, or tilt it down. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. And then on the opposite side from the PC side, there is a power outlet, much shorter cable, which is not all that great. Um, we had to use an extension cord for that. And then if you want to come down to the PC. And then we open Steam. Click on VR, and that'll open Steam VR, which takes just a moment to boot. And you'll notice it's recognizing the headset and the two lighthouses right now in the bottom corner here. But there's something missing in between. And that would be our two track controllers. So those two track controllers are right here. All I have to do is power those on. And as long as they're in sight of the two lighthouses, which they are currently, they'll show up green on that window as well. So next we would actually be setting up for room scale. And they have both room scale and standing only. Like I said, standing only has some limits to the experiences. That guy is the happiest guy. This guy here or this guy here? Both. Left or right? Both. Okay. So clicking on room scale. Um, obviously, I've already made some space. Man, he worked hard. We worked that hard, too. <laughs> Kicking furniture around. Then we click on next. Um, as you see, it already says the controllers are ready and the headset's ready. Click on next again. And then... Do you want to film me doing this or do you want to film that doing it? <laughs> Alright, point your controller, trigger the monitor. It will not start your car. I don't think it started somebody's car, but maybe it did that too. Might be an extra added feature. And we'll click on next. Put the controller on the floor. Then click on calibrate floor. It's done that. Click on next. And now comes the hardest part. You're not going <clears> to <throat> do handspring to do this. No, I am not going to do a handspring, but this is what actually creates the chaperone. So I'm going to click on next, and I'm going to trace my space. Now this may take several attempts to trace my space. You're cheating again.
So we've created a space. And now the moment of truth. We click on next. Oh. And it says we have a valid play area. We had to move that couch a few times last night. So our play space is 2.3 meters by 1.6 meters. That is smaller than some play spaces and larger than others. And now we got a rave. Dang. I kind of wish those lights came on out of the lighthouses when, well, when this we, happened. Did we buy the rock band fog light thing? We do have the rock band stage kit for some old console. We could do so that. We, we could have a nice little rave set up for when room scale finishes up. Man, he is so hype. He is. So that's pretty much it. Um, now the vibe is ready to go. Um, I can actually put the headset on right now and start up a demo. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that. What's great is once you have the Vive set up, you can pick up the controllers without seeing them because they actually are rendered in the SteamVR software. That camera right there in the middle. And I can now see you Hello. using this, the camera enabled uh, Steam front end. And now I am going to play some A10 VR. You want your headphone to complete the setup? Oh yeah, we should set up the headphones. So, um, while this title's launching. So I placed the headphones on his head, but I still have to plug it in here. So there's a little jack right there. It's sticking out. And I'm kind of stuff it right there. And that's it. And now I've lost my husband. He's gone. Sucked into virtual reality. What's that? <laughs>